So the next kit for November is the Hellebore and Twig Trio Kit. Um, now, this is a kit that is perfect for tablescaping during the kind of festive, seasonal, sort of entertaining months of November and December. And it's perfect for your Christmas Day tablescape, um, you know, if you've got your whole family around the table and you want something really beautiful and different, um, you know, just to kind of elevate your tablescaping um, during the festive time. So this is always one of my favourites when there's a trio involved. Um, we do them all the time and they always sell out so quickly. And this month you have your 10 centimetre scallop pots, so three of those. They are just really, really gorgeous, adorable pots. Um, again, really versatile, you can use them for lots of other things, um, you know, when you want to change up um, from your hellebores. They're just a really, really good size. Great for herbs, um, you know, sort of little kind of, I'm trying to think, um, little roses go really well in there. Um, but yeah, they're also good, I think, just for sort of decoration. So just on their own, I think they look lovely. Okay, so in your kit, you will have your three little hellebore plants, um, your three pots, your moss, two different types, your gravel and your compost. And you'll also have your um, dry thyme and your birch twigs too. And that is just to sort of finish off your potting and make it look really beautiful and sort of wintry. Okay, so let's begin. We'll add in first the gravel once your pots are sat on their sources. So the gravel is for drainage. And it's just to kind of make sure that your roots of your hellebores aren't sort of sat in, um, you know, like a, a lot of water. That leads to root rot and will lead to the plant um, dying basically. So it's to prevent that. So we've done the gravel and then we're now gonna add in a little sprinkling of compost over the top of the gravel. Not loads, probably sort of half a handful, that's plenty. And then you can just pop your pot in within its plastic pot just to see the level. Now that's about right. So now I'm gonna start planting up. So give your hellebores a good drink when they arrive so that the compost is nice and sort of damp. Now you may find that you have a younger, fresher plant. We've probably had these at the studio for a, over a week now. So they have bloomed. So on, you know, for example, on this one, there's two flowers already, two on there, one and a half on this one. It's just about to open the second flower. But there are lots and lots of buds. So you might find that yours arrive with maybe one flower or maybe even just all buds, but be rest assured that that is a good thing and it means that then you will have lots more time with your hellebores rather than them arrive to you with all of their blooms and then you have to cut them all off when they fade and then wait for the next lot of buds to kind of emerge. So adding in now your compost around your plants. So the best thing to do is just to sort of gently hold your plant like this at the base and then just sort of take a little bit of compost and just add it around the edges. Of your plant. And then when you've done that, you gently compress the compost down. Now, just be mindful that the, the new buds of your hellebore are around the base of the plant and often they are underneath the soil, just underneath. So if you look at your plants and think, oh, I can't see any buds, they will just be under the surface of the soil. It's, yeah, they are magical. When you, when you first see them, start to poke through, I can see a couple there, it's just so beautiful. They are truly a lovely, lovely winter plant. Okay, so just be really careful when you're compressing down that soil of those buds. Okay, so 
been holding your plant and your finger and thumb just gently adding in sprinklings of compost around the edge okay perfect so then again just gently compressing that compost down oh, compost on my face okay last one Now, in terms of sort of looking after your hellebores indoors, you want to keep them somewhere relatively cool. So nowhere really, really, really hot. So don't put them next to a radiator, for example, or, you know, next to an open fire. They like to be kept as cool as possible, um, but you will be able to enjoy them in your home for a couple of months at least before then needing to put them in your garden so somewhere cool um, keep the soil nice and damp but not waterlogged so don't overwater if you find that they're the um source of the pot is sat in a saucer of water make sure you discard that water so that the roots aren't sat in sort of stagnant water for long periods of time which leads to root root rot and then sort of the death of Plant basically. So keep the soil nice and damp but not waterlogged. Um, keep them as cool as possible but obviously I understand that's tricky in a central, centrally heated home but that's fine. Um, you know they are a plant a bit like an amaryllis I guess. You know they're in the home for the festive season and then you put that bulb if it's an amaryllis in the garden or you put your hellebores in the garden and they will come back next year which is just in my opinion, just a bonus. Um, so yes, not too hot, damp soil. Then when the flowers start to fade, which they will, because then you then snip it off and the new buds will come up and replace those flowers. So you take the faded flower, take it down to the, to the base of the plant and snip. But just be careful of any sort of little buds that are down there um, because you obviously don't want to snip those off because those are the, uh, the buds that are going to grow and replace um, the blooms that have gone over. So take it down to the base, snip it off, it doesn't have to be right right tightly down to the base, it can, you, know, you can leave a centimetre or two of um, stem there, that's fine. Um, and then the buds will then replace them. Um, okay, enough talking, let's add the moss on top. So in your kit you will have two types of moss, You'll have your flat moss, which is this variety here, and then the bun moss, which is the sort of, get rid of these, um, sort of a chunkier um, moss there. Okay, I'm gonna start with my flat moss, and basically I'm just gonna add it in on top of where I see the compost, being very gentle and very mindful of the new buds that will be either slightly showing through or just under the surface. So I'm being really, really delicate. I'm not pushing too hard. And then I'm gonna add some bun moss. You can take off the sort of the root system of the back so that it sits a bit more flush on top of the soil. So again, just being so gentle so I don't disturb those buds. soil as well as looking really really beautiful it's also very helpful having moss on top of the soil um, as it stops the water in the in the compost evaporating so quickly but do be do be mindful and um, when watering to make sure you're watering the plant and not just your moss so make sure that soil is damp and not just the moss Now, 
Now, if you're using these for a table skate, I would recommend, and you know, in my experience of doing lots of table skates, is to dot them along the table, evenly distanced, oh, is that English? <laughs> evenly spaced, yeah, evenly spaced apart, and I'll show you two sets. Let me just let me pop this in quickly and then I'll show you what I mean. So if, for example, you know, you had a six foot table, you would have, say this is a six foot table, you'd put one there, okay, and then you'd put the other one, the next one along, slightly, by an inch or two, no more, like that. And then you'd put the other one, like that. So you're almost doing a very, very subtle zig zigzag a zig of the zag I don't know a, a bit like this just so subtle so that they're not like this they're not in a really really straight line I mean obviously it doesn't matter if you want them in a straight line it will still look gorgeous but I just find that when creating a tablescape that looks I don't know I don't know what the right right word is but just looks like it flows beautifully and it sits amongst all your other kind of elements on the table, like your crockery and your wine glasses and your um, uh, cutlery and your beautiful napkins and any other kind of gorgeous Christmassy festive bits that you have and your crackers, oh, yes, your crackers, it, it, by popping them in a line, but slightly off. So you've got one here. This is, if you imagine it's a bird's eye view, one here, one slightly there and one there. So, and then you have all the other bits dotted around. Go in first obviously with your um, table linens, then go in with your um, crockery and cutlery and napkins, then pop in your tablescape and then add in your glasses around and then your candles and all that kind of stuff. Um, be mindful with candles not to obviously put them underneath um, any kind of leaves or anything because they will be singed. Okay, but in hopefully, if I have time, in December, and then maybe heading into next year, I'm gonna really be focusing lots more on tablescapes and sort of tablescape tutorials and sort of try and get a bit better with the old reels. Um, and just kind of, just showing you how to create that layering. Um, it's one of my most loved things to do. Um, so yeah, that is the plan um, for the next sort of month, few months. So. Yeah, keep an eye on that if you're into the old tablescape. Okay, now, adding in your birch twigs. So you'll receive your birch and your dry thyme with your kits and simply cut little sections, whoop, little sections off like this. And that's what we're going to add in to our pots. If you've got some smaller pieces on there, you can add those in too. probably an inch or two above the sort of top um, leaf or, or flower. It's not too high, which again is perfect for a tablescape. You don't want things sort of really high up. are your birch twigs and then I'm going to add in the dry thyme and again you can just snip this with your um, fingers if you want to and just break it down like this so again this is there just to add that beautiful sort of texture that woodlandy kind of feel festive it just makes them look um, a little bit more special Whoop. 
match it for your hellebore tablespoon. <laughs> I'll start that again, shall I? That is pretty much it for your hellebore tablescaping trio.